Hello everybody, I'm Nick and I just realized while I was working on the sorting video that I haven't actually done any filtering videos up until now and that's 27 episodes after we started so this will be changing the pace a little bit so we're gonna be making a very basic video, a very beginner level video for REST APIs but I have to make this video in order to make the sorting video make sense so if you are familiar with filtering in uh, ASP.NET Core just skip this one but for now I'm just gonna show this here so Filtering is fairly simple. We are actually sort of doing it already with a pagination here. So reading from query parameters is filtering, but we're using those filters to do pagination. So I'm gonna show you how you can use just filters to do good old filtering, really. So here, when we're filtering a resource, it usually goes under the get all endpoint. So the post endpoint in our scenario, which you can see here, is what we're gonna use to add the filtering on top of. You wouldn't normally have filtering on any other REST endpoint. And we're gonna do that with query string parameters. So if you see our posts object, it, I can actually take you there. It has a user ID and I wanna filter by user ID. You can filter by name as well. You can filter by whatever you want, but just keep it simple. Let's just filter by user ID. So I wanna get all the posts for a specific user. What do I do? I add the from query attribute here and I say string user ID. And now once I do that, I can go in the get post chasing method and I can just make it accept this user ID. So string user ID, this uh, could be null because you might not provide it if you don't want to. Let me just copy this because we're gonna need it in the implementation. So here, Here we go. And all we need to do is say in the get post chasing method, if user ID is not string dot is null or empty. So if we actually have a user ID, then we're gonna add it in the where clause of this query. Let's just refactor a little bit this code to make it uh, more easy to use in our filtering. So let's say var queryable equals, and I'm gonna copy this db set i'm gonna use it as a queryable and then i'm gonna replace this here and this here with this queryable and it's gonna work exactly the same way but now we can actually just say queryable equals queryable dot where and then we're gonna use a predicate and say where user id equals user id of course this will not work as expected because i need to use the as queryable method here now it should work fine. So all we're saying is if the user ID is supplied and it's not null or empty, then add it into the filter that ends up hitting the database. That's all we do. And if I go back here, I can just say user ID here. And if I run the API, let's see what happens. So our API is running and I'm already authorized. And if I go on the get all endpoint, I can just say try it out. And as you can see, we have the user ID here as an optional parameter. So if I don't set anything and I just say execute, I'm getting all the posts, or at least the first hundred. But then if I say, okay, use this user ID and return only the users, the post with this user ID, as you can see, I only get two because, or three, because I only have three or <laughs> actually four in the database just these four for this user this is fine and all but what happens if you want to add a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth query parameter to filter this signature will get huge we don't really want to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to create an object same way we did here and we're going to put all our values in that object so i'm going to go into the contracts i'm going to say requests and queries because we already have this folder from the pagination query and i'm gonna say add class get all posts query and in here i'm gonna create a new property named user id and i'm gonna copy the name of this and replace this with query and now we have all our query string parameters here however we also don't want to have the get post async to accept all the parameters in here so we're only going to accept a single one 
And we're going to do the same thing as we did with pagination. We're going to make a filter, a domain object, and we're going to map to that to decouple ourselves directly from the contracts. So I'm going to say get all posts filter here. And I'm going to create the same string user ID. And all we're going to do is register this in the mapper. So let's see how we did that for the pagination filter. And we're going to do the same for um, this new filter. Get all post filter goes here. And get all post query goes here. And this will tell AutoMapper that, hey, if I tell you map this to this, then just map it. So what we're going to do is we're going to save our filter equals mapper dot map. What we're going to map to, we're going to map to get all post filter. And what we're mapping is this query. And now the filter is what we're going to pass to the get posts async method. So if I copy this and I go here, I can say filter, filter equals null, because again, it could be null if you don't supply any properties. And then we're going to go to the implementation and do the same. So let me just copy that. Here we go. And now the filter is here. And again, we can do the same thing where we say if filter question mark, which means um, if filter is not null and user ID is not null or empty, then match on the user ID. So if we run our API again, let's see how this looks like. So here we go again. You can notice that the case of this has changed, but I'm going to explain that in a bit. So again, if we run everything, everything is being returned. But if we just say return for this user ID here, It returns just these four again, nothing more. Now, what we don't necessarily want to do is end up having many things here in an if, if, if clause, because realistically, you won't only be filtering by one thing. You're going to be filtering by this and this and this and how many the user provides. So let's extract this code into its own method. Extract method, and we're going to say add filters on uh query yeah that works and this is where we're gonna start adding all our other methods um if we want to do more filtering so let me just put it at the bottom because private methods should be at the bottom at least public ones should be above them and now we have this filtering something else is as you can see the user id here has a pascal case and uh, before it had a camel case the reason for that is because donor core will use the properties name exactly as it is as what will be exposed to the user as the query string parameter however you can override this behavior and you can do that by using the from query attribute now the problem is that our contracts are in the dotnet standard 2.0 project so we cannot refer to 3.0 mvc but we can use 2.2.5 it's not super recommended to do that, but it will work. So let me just show you if I use the from query here and I say name equals user ID and I run the project again. As you can see in Swagger, the name is now camel case. This is also how you can have a property name be completely irrelevant from the name exposed to the user. So in here you can just say profile ID or something like that. And if I run this again, you can see that now it's called profile ID, even though behind the scenes, it's the user ID. So as you can see, very simple, very easy. It's meant to be a very short tutorial, this one, because it was supposed to come earlier in the series and I just forgot about it. Sorry for that. That's all I had for you for today. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.